beautiful humans. Let's talk about how to create deeply impactful, wildly profitable video content. The majority of money I've made in the last few years was influenced in some way or another by video content. Early days, it was like having a webinar or a VSL. Then I moved to a Facebook group where the core part of our marketing strategy was videos and client testimonials and case studies. And now for the last 18 months, the majority of what's driven my revenue and the effortlessness I have around getting clients is YouTube content. So whether you are wanting to do more with video or whether you are simply wanting to speak on stage better, whether you've got something to say or something to sell, or if you watch this channel, likely you just want to get clients. I want to walk you through the four things that I think about whenever I'm getting on stage, whenever I'm turning a video camera on that help me influence people in a really kind of seemingly effortless way and end up making me a ton of money on the other side because of the structure with which I use and the way that I communicate. So I'm hoping this video is helpful for you. I just have four really simple points and it's a beautiful time to create this uh, or it's a humbling time to create this because I was on stage for a few minutes yesterday and I felt like I did not do well at all. And so I'm coming at you from as a student uh, who has a ton of experience and is still learning. So when I first got started speaking, I was 16 years old. I dropped out of high school at 16. So literally the moment I could, I think I turned 16 in August of 2006. And by September 2006, I was out of school. And I am not a good case study for why you shouldn't drop out of school. I really fell on my feet. It was an uh, interesting time. I became the youngest sexual education teacher in New Zealand, despite having not really any experience on the subject. And I would go around these schools and I would talk to them. And so I did that dozens and dozens and dozens of times, having to talk to teenagers like very similar in age to me uh, about these kind of like making life choices and things like that, right? Kind of like positive, positive choices, positive life choices, I guess you could say. And then when I was 18 in 2008, I became a youth pastor. Like I was working at a church and over the, the from 2008 to 2018, I spoke on stage in some you know way, shape or form over 500 times. So I didn't do any video content whatsoever. My background was speaking on stage, speaking to teenagers that didn't want anything to do with me, didn't want to hear, but they felt like they were taken hostage. And over that time, I was trying to influence them, trying to communicate key messages from the Bible and you know help them make better choices in life. And then when I stepped into the online space, I had to figure out the video thing. And to be honest, it took me a really long time. Uh, and if I had really taken these four things I'm gonna share with you more seriously, I would have been able to create deeper influence with the people that you know aspire to work with me, create deeper impact with people that are currently work with me through workshops and in-person events and things like that, if I had followed these four things more closely. Because you've probably felt this in your content, that sometimes you feel like you're on the mark and on the money and you hit it, and other times you are struggling. You don't know why the video you shot didn't work, why no leads followed up. You did the VSL, it didn't convert. Uh, and then there are times you're in flow and there's this inconsistency and, and unpredictability and that never goes away. It's not like when you get to a certain stage, you never bomb. Uh, it's just that bombing looks different, right? Your standards have increased. But I'm walking you through the four things that will help you if you're trying to uh, be better on stage, you're trying to be better on video that you can incorporate today to do this more impactfully. And I'll specifically dial in one particular thing around storytelling that I think is really powerful that this video is actually inspired by a question in my community around how to tell great stories. So let's start with number one. Number one is the point of emotion. When you think about your content, no doubt you're thinking about communicating an idea. And that's really powerful, right? Ideas have changed the world, but information is not all people need, right? Derek Sivers said it like this. I think he said, um, if information was all we needed, we would all be billionaires with six pack abs. So you have to shift this idea that simply by impressing people with your knowledge, uh, people are going to want to work with you, right? It is not the case, especially in the age of AI and ChatGPT, where you can find any amount of knowledge at your fingertips and going to get a video script out of thin air, the 10 points, the five steps too. That is not really what is going to leave a deep and meaningful impact with people. It's not going to be the thing that helps you become influential in your niche. What really helps you become influential is your ability to connect at a deep emotional level. And so one of the things I think about whenever I think about creating a piece of content is I think about what emotion do I want people to feel? And I don't mean this in a manipulative sense, right? If you think about a film score behind the background of what we're seeing, there's what we're hearing. 
And what we're hearing is there to amplify it what's happening in the scene. It's there to convey a certain message, right? We know what's going to happen in a scary movie because the music is leading us towards a suspenseful, a suspenseful scene. They're trying to create an emotion. So when you think about your content, you should be thinking emotion first, not just ideas, right? What do I want people to feel? Another way to say this is, in fact, there's this great book that I highly recommend you get. It's from uh, one of my all time mentors and really good friends, Earl McMahon. It's called The Seven Frequencies of Communication. In this book, he talks about how everyone has a predominant way that they communicate, a frequency. There's you know, the professor who's predominantly data-driven. There's the healer who makes people feel seen and heard and understood, makes people feel like they're okay, they're worthy, right? We're at a conference right now in LA. I'm in this kind of like side room studio. And uh, literally the person on stage right now is, is uh, authored a book called Worthy. And it's no surprise that one of her frequencies is the healer frequency. And so we all have natural ways that we communicate, right? Some people are motivational, some people are challenges. We need all of that. So number one, it starts with self-awareness. Like how do you naturally like to communicate? You don't wanna be anyone you're not. You wanna really own your frequency, own the way that you communicate. But in so doing, you need to be intentional about amplifying that. You need to be really clear. What do I want people to feel? Do I want them to feel uplifted? Do I want them to feel heard and seen and understood? Or do I want them to feel challenged? One of the sayings that we had when I was a, I guess you could call me a preacher, was, um, you know, a good message uh, disturbs the comforted and comforts the disturbed. In other words, it kind of, you know, people that feel like everything's chaos, it kind of like calms things down for them. People that are too comfortable, right? It, it, it kind of challenges them, it stretches them. And great content makes people feel a certain way. And so when you're thinking about creating an Instagram carousel or, you know, Predominantly what we're talking about here is video content or spoken content. You want to communicate emotion and you do that by first becoming aware of what emotion you feel like you want to communicate that lines up with the idea or the topic of the particular video. So that's number one. You want to make people feel something. You need to transcend just communicating head to head. You need to have this feeling of like heart to heart. And when you have that, you have the experiences of, excuse me, itchy nose, um, you have the experiences of people feeling like you were speaking just to them. See, this video might get a few hundred views, but there'll be people that didn't connect with, and that's totally cool. I'm not a magician when it comes to this stuff. I'm still learning. But there'll be other people who go, this video was the perfect thing for me. This is just the right time. It's exactly what I need to hear. And you want to increase the probability of that happening by being clear on the emotions you're trying to use to connect with people and the emotions you want people to feel. So that's number one. Number two, uh, along this line, uh, is authenticity. And this is a learned skill. It's both a decision and a learned skill, right? Uh, sometimes you have to learn to be yourself, which sounds really funny. Like when you're creating content, I'll never forget, when I was speaking a lot uh, in my years of being a youth pastor, I would write so many notes, like pages and pages and pages of notes, because that's what everyone else did. And so I'll never forget being incredibly frustrated with how something went for all the right reasons because I was uh, going to be speaking at our church gatherings that Sunday to about 1,500 people across three different gatherings. And so normally in a week like that, I would set aside a bunch of time and I would map out what I was going to say and what I would walk with, I walk up to the stage with on Sunday was an iPad that had pages and pages and pages of notes and scribbles and highlights. But that week... One of my best friend's dads passed away. And so my mind was not thinking about Sunday. It was trying to be there with my friend. We were at his family's house. We were at the funeral. And so I get to the city I'm speaking in that morning with no notes, with literally no ideas of what I'm going to speak on. If that sounds terrifying to you, it was terrifying to me. I was about to step on stage in front of four to 500 people and I didn't know what I was gonna say. And so during the music time, I'm really just trying to create some space and connect and hear and whatever else. And I write like five words down. I feel like I get a couple of ideas and I figure out how to string them together. And I write five words down on my phone and then I go up on stage and I give probably one of the best talks I've ever given in my life. And it was so frustrating because it was uh, not what I thought was going to happen. I thought it was going to be terrible. I had people coming up to me like, that was amazing. Best thing of the time I've ever heard you. You felt like you were speaking right to me. Then on the flip side, 
I have had moments where I was so polished, so well prepared, so scripted. One particular time I was speaking at a camp of 5,000 people. It was such a big opportunity. I had like 10 to 15 minutes, so it wasn't long. And so I really prepared. I wrote down, I scripted. I, I'm saying like, this is the story I'm up with. These are the jokes I'm gonna say. This is the moment I pause. So the joke really lands and then I say something else and then there's a double landing or whatever that saying is in, in kind of joke land. Um, and it was okay. It, like, it wasn't great. And what I can tell you is that there are moments where I feel like I've been myself on video, on stage. And in those moments, I have really connected. Now, they might not be the most polished, the most fancy, the most impressive, but those are the ones that have deeply connected. Then there are other times where I, I feel like I'm so aware of how I want to be seen. I, I, I'm, oh, I really, the 5,000 teenagers, I want to be really funny. Right? So I'm trying to be something that I might not be naturally. Authenticity is really the thing that allows you to create influence with your audience. It's the thing that allows you to get people to want to work with you and buy and stay and pay and refer for years. Now, it's a decision because some of you are creating a real clear sense of the person you are and there's a distance between who you are and who you want to be seen as. There's an image management that you're engaging in. So there's a decision that you need to make around, am I actually gonna be transparent? Am I gonna be vulnerable? Am I gonna let people see me for who I really am? Or am I gonna to pretend to be someone I'm not, right? Show the best, hide the rest. So there's a decision, but there's also a skill. You've gotta find your voice. I don't think you just decide one day you're gonna do it and then you find your voice and you sound amazing. It's like music, it's like art. You've gotta find your own style and your way in this. But the commitment is, am I gonna be a voice or an echo? And why I'm sharing this is because you wanna create deep impact, deep influence. You wanna create this effortless client conversion machine through videos and speaking. You have to let people see you for who you really are because people buy who you are, not just what you do. They buy coaches, they don't just buy coaching. It's a quote from um, one of my really good friends and original mentor is Taki Moore, right? People don't buy coaching, they buy coaches. So they're buying into you. If they cannot see you for who you really are. Connecting is almost impossible. And you have to allow them to see you, which means your talks, your videos, you can't be the hero in everything. You can't be the person who seems like they have it all together because people can't relate to that. So number one is emotion. What do you want people to feel? Number two is, are you letting people see you for who you really are? Number three is really practical. So I want you to hang with me on this because this is the secret that I uh, have implemented to allow me to speak for hours at a time and have no notes in front of me. One of the key things that I have learned with structure is that you need to find structures that work for you, which means you need to figure out, do I need scripts? Do I need prompts? Do I need bullet points? Do I want none of that? And when I first started my events, I ran my first event like 18 months ago. So it wasn't that long ago. And I was up for days creating uh, slides. So I was like drinking from a fire hose that first event. I must have created hundreds of slides and the sessions were 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. for two days. And I went so hard and I got sick halfway through. Like I was stressed, it was intense. I felt like my vo I'd lost my voice. And it was really because I was using a structure that was not helpful for me. But I thought that's what you had to do because you're running events. And everything shifted for me when I went to one of my good friends and mentors events in Austin, Texas last year, an event called Awaken run by a guy called Danny Morrell. And he packs out these events five to six times a year, 500, 600, 700 people. And he told me he doesn't prepare anything, doesn't prepare any notes. He just reads the room, you know, whatever that means. I'm kind of learning to do that. Reads the room, figures out what people need. And then just like, he might have some slides prepared, like, on the off charts he needs them, but he really crafts and caters it to the people in the room. That was exactly what I needed to hear. Every event since then I haven't really prepared. There have been some days I wake up and I go, I wanna speak on this, so I might prepare a few slides, but I do not go on with a pre-plan. That has been so freeing to me, but it's because I found a structure that really worked with me. So I'm gonna share with you the, the uh, four part structure, the four words that I memorize when I'm thinking about a video like this, when I'm thinking about getting on stage to create more impact, more influence, to help it create more momentum within my funnel, okay? So the four words are really simple. What, why, how, now. And I'm sure I picked this up from someone over the years. I don't know who to give credit to, so shout out to the four word creator. What, why, how, now. 
So let's take this video, for example. So the what is the hook, right? This is what where you really, in the first 10 to 20 seconds, you need to capture people's attention and give them a reason to stick around. So in this video, I talked about how uh, videos have been incredibly impactful for me and the amount of money I've made through the way that I use video content to de create deep influence in my audience. So the promise of the hook is, I'm gonna teach you how to do what I do, right? When you are starting on a speech, when you are starting on a workshop with your clients, when you're starting a video, you need to give people a strong reason to pay attention. That is the what. N number two is the why. And I'm gonna spend some time on this because this is very important. The why, allows people to understand why this is important. What is at stake for them if they don't do this, if they don't take advantage of this. If they do take advantage of this, here's what can happen. It's really about connecting emotionally with people and inspiring people. Now, why I'm gonna go deeper on the why is because this is particularly where it is really helpful to share stories. Because if you just come in hot out the gate and you're just teaching, people might be, intellectually engaged if you're really charismatic, but they're not emotionally engaged. So when you talk about the time you failed or the time you succeeded and then lost it all, you're really pulling people in because you're speaking to a different part of them. Mostly we think about communication as like knowledge, right? Like I said at the start, the head to head. But stories allow us to connect heart to heart. There's that saying of like facts tell, but stories sell. That people buy on emotion and then they justify with logic. So the why section is really about creating a sense of connection and you often do this through stories. So a couple of key pointers that I've been learning myself are to tell better stories. So number one, we had this amazing session with uh, one of my clients I've worked with a big portion of this year, a YouTuber called Hamza. And he has 2.3 million subscribers. He has great content, very compelling. He has a cult-like following and he paid for uh, storytelling and speaking coaching. And one of the things he said, I can't remember the exact phrase he used, but basically like when you're telling a story, you want to pull people into it. Like where were you? What was happening? What were the days? So like when I first started the story, I talked about how in August 2006, I dropped out of high school. And then basically as soon as I could in September, I then left high school and start a new job as a sexual education teacher, right? It's pulling people in so that they know where you are. What is it? What are the smells? What are the tastes? What does the environment look like? How are you feeling? You don't have to go into everything and kind of overkill, but you really want to allow people to feel like they're there with you reliving that moment. And so that's one of the key things that I've learned is that like when you're telling stories, you don't just talk about a season very vaguely. Like when I was young, I had a troubled childhood. And you're trying to be impactful, but you're like, yeah, it was really hard like when I was young, like from the ages of zero to 15. It's like, well, what was it about? And was there any particular moments that characterized your childhood, right? This is just an example, but you're trying to pull people into it. The second thing is, is as a coach, as a creator online, you need to be good at pulling on what I call core stories. You probably understand not all stories are created equal. Some of them are boring, some of them are disengaging, some of them are irrelevant. What you want to get good at is finding your key stories that really help people get to know you and help people get to know like how you came to be the person you are, what you believe, what you value, so that they can make like a connection with a reference point. And so one of the things that I talk about a lot is this pee in a bottle story, right? You might have heard it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to kind of go all into it, but basically the premise is in 2001, sorry, 2021, 20 years later, um, business was going okay, but we were stalled, right? We're at 130,000 a month, which is where most people would aspire to be, but we were stuck, man. And I'm telling you right now, like being stuck at 10,000, 5,000, 100,000, the feeling is the same. It's horrible. It's the feeling of failure. It's the feeling of lack of momentum. And so we were stuck there and we had a couple of key things, I'm not gonna go into all of it, um, that basically shifted our business from you know 130 to $347,000 cash 90 days later. So, picture of success, hanging out with Sam Owens, hanging out with Alex Homozzi, super cool, uh, got the Tesla, got the house, blah, blah, blah. And it was the peak unhappiness for me in that business, right? I was stuck on calls all day, I was managing this big team, I had a business model that I hated. And the climax moment of this story for this season is I was on so many Zoom calls that on one particular Zoom call, I had to discreetly under the table pee into a bottle. And that was the moment I realized something had to change. Now, when I tell that core story, right, I have had people reference that to me so much. Literally new clients 
we'll go through one of our first modules, which me covers like the last six years of business. And that's a story that's in there. They'll say, oh my gosh, I so related to that, right? When I share that in marketing, people go, I have that version of a business right now. The goal in your core stories is not just for people to get to know you, it's to create a sense of relatability because not many people can say they got to 347,000 a month and business was hard or dumb or they didn't like it. But everyone has had moments in business where you ask yourself the question, surely there must be an easy way for this. Or you feel like you're misaligned. You feel like on the outside things are going well, but you don't know why on the inside you feel like things are falling apart. So when I tell that story, the point is not Dan's crushing and you peed in a bottle. It is we have all experienced that moment where we feel like business could be better, but we don't know what's wrong. And then I share the lessons from that. And when I share the story in that way, people connect at a deeper level. So one of the easiest things to do for point number three with structure under the why, because remember in that structure, I know it's been a few minutes, what, why, is tell stories and thread them throughout everything you're doing to not just paint you as the hero, that is not what you're trying to do, but to create a sense of relatability. So in every piece of video content, every time you speak, you want to infuse it with stories. Facts tell, stories tell, stories create connection, they create relatability. Those are the foundations for deep influence because if you want to make more money, move people through your funnel, you have to emotionally connect and we do that through stories. So number three part of the structure, so what, why, how is the bulk of your video right? The bulk of your presentation. This is where you break down, in my case, the four key things to create wildly profitable video content, right? And so this is where you're going to have one idea, three ideas, five ideas. It really depends how much time you have. You absolutely want to err on the side of simplicity and 80-20. I shot this video just before the video you're watching now and I had too many points. And so then I was like, I'm gonna summarize it into four points. And maybe if I did it again, I could summarize it into three. My point being, you want to simply communicate the core essentials and nothing else. Like Pareto's principle, 80-20, you wanna focus on the 20% of things that you can say that's gonna drive 80% of the effect, right? Have 80% of the results. And so you wanna simply communicate the core ideas. So don't take 10 steps when it could be five. Don't take five when it could be three and then you adjust them obviously to the time allotted that you have. So that is number three part of structure is how, and then the last part is now. So what, why, how, now? What do you want people to do? What do you want people to feel? Maybe the application of your video or your speaking is practical, right? This happens a lot in my workshops where the now is like now we're gonna do a breakout or we're gonna actually work through this together and we're gonna create an exercise around this. Your now might be more emotional. Your now might be more about making them feel a certain emotion as they're leaving, feel inspired, feel empowered, feel courageous, whatever it is, you're intentionally leaving them with something in the now, right? That is how I structure. The goal is not for you to mimic the what, why, how, now framework and go, it works for Dan, it's gonna work for me. The goal is to find the structure that frees you up to feel like you're in flow and create content more consistently, right? So that's the structure. And then number four, I touched on this, I'm just gonna really quickly touch on it, and as I'm talking about it, I could have made this three instead of four, is the simplicity piece, right? One of the key things that I have really struggled with, and I had this moment yesterday, I had the opportunity to speak here for a few minutes to promote this particular community, because this conference that I'm in, the arena conference, is uh, really the expression of an online community. And I don't love selling stuff. Like my goal with all of my funnel is to create marketing so good that sales is almost non-existent. People just reach out and say, I wanna work with you. And then I send them the details and they sign up. But nevertheless, I find myself in a situation yesterday where I have seven minutes to basically like make an offer. And so I write down a bunch of thoughts and the moment I get on stage, I'm like, I have too many thoughts and I'm rushing through this. And so I had one story, and the first point of the story was that uh, there is power in getting in the room. And every great stretch, every great exponential growth curve in my income has come from getting in the room, right? Getting in the virtual room, getting in the physical room, right? But then I tell another story about how important it is to get in the right room. And I was like, who here has ever been in the wrong room? Blah, blah, blah. Tell a second story. My point being, I did not have enough time. I needed one story, I needed to maximize that story, I needed to go deeper, I needed to spend longer, I needed to create more emotional connection, I needed to keep things simpler. When I hear people communicate, 
And I'm not saying I'm a master of this. I'm a student. I'm a young Padawan, just like many of you. Oftentimes, people over communicate. They're talking too much. There are too many ideas. And the best thing you could do is really synthesize of all the things that I'm saying, what are the most important? And the more that you refine the skill, the easier it is to spot. And of course, it's easier to spot on other people. Some of you are sitting there going, dude, this could have been a five minute video. And I probably agree. But the point is, is that you really want to create simplicity and structure so there is flow in what you're saying. Not only so you don't need stacks of notes and a teleprompter, but so that people remember what it is you're communicating to them. So the four points, make people feel something. Number two, let people see your authentic self. Number three, create a structure that works for you. And number four, keep it incredibly simple. My goal here was really simple. I want you to understand that video content and speaking on stage, developing the skill set of communication is one of the most powerful, potent, profitable skill sets you could ever create for yourself. But it is a skill set that needs honing, that needs work. If you want to be an amazing storyteller, you need to tell a lot of stories and refine it each time you tell it. If you wanna be an impactful, influential communicator, you need to work on your pacing, your intonation, your highs, your lows, right? This skill set is worth investing in. Don't just hide behind a keyboard and hope that your charisma or your passion for your product is the thing that people feel and nothing else. You need to get good. Just like a sales page requires good copywriting skills, getting good on YouTube, getting good on stage requires a similar but different skill set that will not just be developed through lots of practice, but developed through intentional practice. So I'm hoping this values, uh, video has been valuable for you. Sending you a ton of love from Los Angeles and we'll talk soon.